Now let's take a, a breather. The road to Paris 2024 takes its most important stop in uh, Eugene, Oregon for Team USA's track and field athletes. The U.S. Olympic trials begins on Friday, June 21 and will conclude on the 30th. The 100-meter finals will be contested on the first weekend with the women's final set for Saturday the 22nd and the men's event Sunday the 23rd. USA Today track and field analyst and reporter Tyler Dragon joins us to break down what to expect this weekend. Uh, Tyler, welcome to the show. Uh, let's start off with uh, one of the Blue Ribbon events. And we're talking about the 100 meters for women in particular. And all eyes will be on Shakira Richardson and what she will have to offer uh, during the course of the meet and over 100 meters. Uh, what form do you think she's going to be entering the trials with? Well, she really has all the momentum uh, heading into the Olympic trials. She just won the Free Fontaine Classic. She looked to be in excellent form to me. And she's entering uh, the trials as the heavy uh, favorite in the women's uh, 100 meters. And remember, she won the last Olympic trials uh, in the women's 100 meters before she was uh, suspended for a month for testing positive for THC. So. I really do think Sha'Carri Richardson has momentum on her side, and she is going to come away uh, with the gold. But there's going to be competition uh, there. Mackenzie Long, uh, the NCAA champion in the 100 meters. You got a, a Jaques uh, Sears uh, on the women's side, then a, a, and a Leah Hobbs. So there's a lot of competition in the women's 100 meters. Sha'Carri Richardson is the prohibitive favorite but there is a lot of other women that uh, are in the running to not only uh, compete for that gold, but uh, be in the podium and earn their ticket to Paris. Mackenzie, no, let me start with Jessie Shears. Um, 1077, she's the fastest in the world this, this year. And she picked up an injury that looked pretty serious at the time it happened. Do you have any idea what kind of shape she's in now heading into the, into the championships? Yeah, that, that's a mystery for a, a lot of people, including myself. That, that injury she uh, suffered at, at the conference championship, she did not compete in the NCAA championships. And really, that 1077 world lead that she ran, that's pretty much like an outlier. Nobody has been able to uh, come close to that time uh, this season. So if she can regain her form if she's healthy number one and regain her form she's definitely a uh, favorite to uh, make the team usa and even win if she can uh, get that 1077 because shakari richardson hasn't even uh, run a 1077 this year shakari's uh you know pr of 1065 uh, is the the best uh preliminary mark of the meet but you know if, if sears can be healthy and emulate that 1077 she's going to be tough to beat as well but you know it, it's hard for me to imagine that you know after that injury and coming back relatively a, a month after uh, her being able to you know rekindle that time and be up to tip top form to be able to run that sort of time again but we've seen uh, stranger things happen in Eugene, and it's a fast track. So I, I do think she's one athlete to watch this weekend. Mackenzie Long, outstanding NCAA season, three gold medals, you know, big PBs in the in the hundred and the two hundred, especially. You know, do you think that two two week window since the end of the NCAA's will have an impact on her ability to meet those standards at the U.S. trials, given the workload that she's carried um, throughout the season? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. And really, I, I feel sorry for all the NCAA athletes competing at the Olympic trials because it's a long, arduous season that they have to endure. And on top of, you know, completing the long NCAA season, now they have to try to make the Olympics and, uh, you know, in the professional uh, ranks. And really, Mackenzie Long, though, I, I really like what she did at the NCAA championship. She looks to be in tip top form and she's peaking at the right time. And the 100 is going to be tough for her to make, but I, I really do believe the 200 is an event 
that she can come along and make Team USA. She's one of those bubble athletes in the women's 100. And really, after Shakira Richardson, the field is wide open in the women's 100 meters. So I would not be surprised if uh, she makes the team, but I think she's um, more of a favorite to make it in the 200 than the 100. But she might sneak in that 100 field as well. So, so the question is, who do you think would be on the outside or could be left on the outside looking in as far as the women's 100 meters is concerned? Because uh, we've listed a host of athletes. You, you did say that th those coming from the NCAA circuit under so much pressure to perform. But, but what are your thoughts as to who could be on the outside looking in? Man, I, I hate to say it, but maybe like a T.T. Terry, uh, uh, Tamara Davis, uh, mm. those athletes, you know, they could make the Olympic team, but I would not be surprised if they were on the outside looking in, maybe finishing fourth or fifth. This women's field is stacked this year, and they're all around this, the same times. You know, you have a Sears at 1077, and that's, you know, her lifetime uh, PR and, you know, the world lead. But really, all the women are around that, you know, 10, 8, 10, 9 uh, range in mid 10, 8s and mid 10, 9s. So it's going to be close. Uh, but if, if I had to put my money on it, I, I think, you know, maybe a TT Terry is going to be in the outside uh, looking in. Let's go over to the men's equivalent now. Uh, and the question that I'd like to ask you is, is Noah Lyles a favorite for the men's 100 meters as Shakiri is f the favorite for the women's equivalent? Yes, but Christian Coleman, Fred Curley, they're going to have something to say about mm. that. N Noah Lyles, he's coming off the world championship as well. We all have seen in the 100 and 200. He has momentum on his side. He has bragging rights on the side, and he's ready uh, uh, for these Paris Olympics. And he wants to, you know, get this going and have momentum on his side. So when I look at Noah Lyles, I do believe he is the front runner for the men's 100 meters, but he's going to have competition. Christian Coleman won the world uh, in indoor title in the, in the 60. Fred Curley, he has kind of a... <laughs> Uh, he doesn't really is, is not too fond of Noah Lyles uh, and he wants to win that 100 meter uh, title uh, those two have a little sort of a rivalry so those three together I believe are the front runners to make the team um, to me Noah Lyles I believe is going to win but Fred Curley and uh, Christian Coleman watch out for those two as well Coleman has a tendency to well not a tendency. His last fought is the weakest part of his race. I had a, yeah. convers a conversation with him when he was in Jamaica, and he admitted as much. How much of a factor do you think that is and will be in that final, assuming he makes the final at the U.S. trials, given the fact that there are so many other stronger athletes over the last 40 of that race that could probably seem probably being, you know, being on the outside looking in? Is that a possibility, you think? Yeah, that's why uh, uh, Christian Coleman is so good at the 60, <laughs> because that his start and the middle part of his race, 30, 40, 50 meters, is so good. His drive phase, his acceleration, is just that close, the last 40, the last 30 meters where he struggles, as you mentioned. And really, he, he knows it. So if you know it and you're a veteran athlete, he's been there, done that before. He knows that's the part of his race that he needs to fine tune and work on. And I expect him to be cognizant of that in Eugene. And I do, don't believe this going to affect him as much as he's not going to make the team. Right. I do believe that his start, his drive phase and acceleration throughout those 60 meters is going to be enough to him to be in the top three. The question is, is he's going to have enough to be first or second? But I do believe he's going to be in that top three and it's not going to affect him too much. Is there an outlier, you think, from the NCAAs or somebody we've not mentioned who could spring a surprise at the U.S. trials this year? So it's more so on the women's side, like uh, Mackenzie Long or Jaquiz uh, uh, Sears. Uh, on, the, on the men's side, I really don't see, uh, um, you know, a collegiate athlete that's going to surprise us and really make the team this year or get first or second at the Olympic trials. 
So the, the women's side, they have a lot of younger athletes that are, have a lot of potential in coming up. But the men, it's, it's not the, uh, the year for them this year, uh, I'm afraid to say. So to answer your question, no. Tyler, thanks very much, man. We appreciate the time that you've taken uh, to join us here on Le Baton, And I'm sure uh, this coming weekend and the days after that will be really exciting stuff in the United States. Thanks for having me on. Have a good day. All right. Thanks much. Leighton, so we've mentioned the big names. I, I want to hear your thoughts. I'm going to start with the, on, the, on the women's side, right? Because um, what we have seen so far in terms of the new names that you mentioned to challenge a Shakiri Richardson, the outstanding favorite. By the way, do you agree with the fact that she is the outstanding favorite here? Yeah, and even though she's she's run 10 3 this year, which is not the fastest in the U.S. this year, just as she is the um, is the fastest in the world this year, 1077. What we've seen from Shakiri is similar to what Stephen Francis was mentioning earlier. Has not been impressive so far this year but we expect her to run really fast this weekend and of course going into Paris she run even faster I think the 1065 that she ran last year is where I think I expect her to be running again this year so no no surprises expected here not in the women's hundred not for me so you're saying that the surprise could come on the men's side as far as the challenger to Noah Lyles I think Lyles is the is the marginal favorite for me hmm. on 985 he makes him the fastest American man this year the thing is whether or not he'd be able to hold off a Christian Coleman, who I know is working on his last 40. Mm -hmm. And if he, gets a, if he gets a start like we know he can, can he hold off Lyles? Fred Curley, I'm beginning to have my doubts about Curley. I mean, he talks a lot. He does. But he doesn't <laughs> back it up because he has these issues that seem to somehow affect his ability to perform at the highest level. Remember, he was supposed to be in among the medals at the World Championships last year. In that, did that did materialize. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so what we've seen from him this year, I haven't seen anything to convince me that he's going to be a factor in terms of potentially winning the, the, the 100 meters. Sorry. So I'm looking at either Coleman or, or Lyles. That's where my, my, that's my one, two, actually, in, in with a, whichever order they finish in. But I don't see Curly being a factor in that, in that race any at all. Lyles has, has mentioned before in the aftermath of him actually losing to Oblique Seville at the National Stadium in Kingston a couple of weeks ago uh, that he's basically going back to the drawing board and he'll see him in Paris. But surely he'd want to make a statement here at the U.S. Trials. Of course he's going to want to. This is no Lyles. This mm. is a guy who, for the most part, backs up his talk with, yeah. uh, with action. And I think the loss to, to, to Seville at the National Stadium in Kingston at the Racers Grand Prix on June 1st, he would have been fired up yeah. to go back to training and work with Lance Brahman and say, how can I be better at this? Obviously, his start at the National Stadium wasn't what he would have liked. The thing is that these things happen, and it's gonna, it could happen in the major championships, and this is an opportunity for him to set that right. And if he sets it right, I expect he'd probably run something like 978 at the US Trials and say, see, I told you. But whether or not he'd be able to go to Paris and do it, given what we've seen from the men's field globally now, it's going to be a lot more challenging. And as far as Coleman is concerned, his prospects? I think he will be in the top three, definitely. I think his start, is his, his first 60 is the best part of his race. Mm -hmm. Where he falls short, uh, short, and we saw that at the World Championship last year, where he faded from first to fourth in no time flat. Yeah. He's going to have to find a way to fix that last 40 because he can't hold his speed long enough. And because of that, he gets caught late in races all the time, especially if he's in a race with guys who are as fast as or faster than he is. So I think, I think he'll be in top, top three. Whether or not he wins, I think will depend on how well he executes that last 40 meters. Yeah, the US trials would be equally exciting, one suspects, uh, starting this weekend. And it lasts for the entire week, which yeah. is a little different th yeah. from most national championships that we do observe. All right, we'll take a, a break. Back with more after this. Stay with us.